Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 181 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine. And the top story I want to share with you today is that Ukrainian fighter pilots are training on a do-it-yourself A-10 Warthog simulator. While the United States has yet to donate the famed Warthog plane to Ukraine, an infantry officer is taking preemptive measures just in case that day comes. So this is the A-10 Thunderbolt, nicknamed the Warthog. And according to a feature story published by Time Magazine, an entrepreneurial Ukrainian infantryman has managed to crowdfund the development of a secret A-10 Warthog simulation training center. The iconic attack plane has been a sought-after aircraft by the Ukrainian forces since the start of the country's conflict with Russia. So here is a clip of the segment run by Time Magazine. Let's watch about one minute of this clip together. Things that they don't have. Today I got to visit one of these training centers uh, where the Ukrainians are learning how to use an airplane, how to fly an airplane, an American one called the A-10 Warthog. It was designed a long time ago, in the 1970s. It was first produced with the specific aim of taking out Soviet tanks in a potential war between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Ukrainians now say that the time to use this weapon has come because you have Soviet-made Russian tanks attacking Ukrainian territory, seizing Ukrainian territory. And the United States happens to have an airplane that is specifically designed to take out tanks on the plains of Europe. So the Ukrainians have gone ahead and started training how to use these planes before they get them. They're using virtual reality goggles and flight simulators to try to get as close as they can to learning how to fly these planes before the United States makes the decision to actually provide them. And the simulators are pretty convincing. I tried one of them on just now. So this is very impressive initiative being taken by the Ukrainians because it was already publicly disclosed that money by Congress was allocated to bring Ukrainian pilots to the United States to train them to fly F-16s. But there was no mention of the A-10 Warthog. But Ukraine has publicly said, please let us train on these planes. We would like these planes in addition to potentially receiving F-16s. And I want to read you this paragraph from the article. Gorgon noted that the video game-like nature of the facility was directly inspired by the U.S. Air Force A-10 pilots of the 355th training squadron at this Air Force base in Arizona, who used the publicly available digital combat simulator world computer game to train in virtual reality. So anyone who wants to learn how to fly an A-10 plane apparently can download this game on Steam, and it's called Digital Combat Simulator, and if you have a VR headset like a MetaQuest 2, I guess you can train yourself how to fly an A-10 Warthog plane. Pretty cool. Here's a schematic of what this plane looks like, and it's basically a giant gun with wings. There's a General Electric 30mm rotary cannon in the front, as well as all the bombs that it can carry under the wings. And I think the, the biggest concern about providing this plane is it's a win-more condition. In order for this plane to fly safely and effectively, effectively, you already need air superiority or air dominance of the skies. So yes, I think uh, Ukraine would really like this plane as they have comparable Soviet-age fighters. But if you're flying this plane successfully, then you're probably already going to win the war. What Ukraine needs are fighter jets comparable to the F-15 and F-16. And uh, the reason why is because they need air superiority. And I'm actually making the claim in this video that I think by December or January, Ukraine will have air superiority of the skies in Ukraine over Russia. That's an incredible achievement as they approach the one-year point in this war. And they're getting this done by being very innovative. And Ukrainian MiG-29s are firing these AGM-88 anti-radiation missiles. The Pentagon has now confirmed sending these AGM-88 missiles to Ukraine and that they have been integrated 
into the country's MiG-29s. So what do these anti-radiation missiles do? I've mentioned them before, but anti-radiation missiles like the AGM-88s are primarily designed to home in on enemy signal emitters, especially air defense radars, including those directly associated with surface-to-air missile systems. So here is the clip put out by the Ukrainian Air Force showing how they've adapted uh, this U.S.-provided missile onto Soviet-era fighter jets. This is pretty incredible. Let's watch this together. Unfortunately, there's no subtitles. С початком повномасштабного вторгнення ваші здібності та вміння стали рятівним куполом як для нашого війська, так і для цивільного населення країни. This is an absolutely incredible and rare uh, video put out by the Ukrainian Air Force because they're still flying in the country. Six months into this war, you, uh, Russia has not destroyed all of these planes, destroyed all of these air bases while Russia wastes their cruise missiles, attacking schools and hospitals and concert halls, the Ukrainian Air Force is still flying combat missions against them. That just shows you how inept and ineffective Russian intelligence, Russian, uh, <laughs> the Russian Air Force itself, has been in six months of this conflict. Now, how are they going to find all of these Russian air defense systems? Here's a funny picture of a dumb Russian tourist uh, who was posing on a beach in Crimea in front of Russian air defense systems and didn't have geolocation turned off on his camera. So you can go into the metadata of the picture and get the exact GPS coordinate coordinates. It's a funny picture that went viral, but I'm pretty confident over the next couple months, Ukraine will find and destroy all of Russia's air defense systems in the occupied territories. In addition, the skies over Ukraine are still contested. Dogfight over Ukraine shows the air war is still very much being fought. Seeing fighter jets do battle at close quarters is a rare sight in modern warfare. But yesterday, folks in war-torn Ukraine saw such a spectacle. And these are the skies over the Donbass region. Here's a clip. It's only a couple seconds long where you can see, uh, let's see here, a Ukrainian Su-27 shooting flares towards a guided missile fired by a Russian fighter jet not seen on camera. And these residents in this town of Pokrovsk rushed out to gape at the spectacle and applaud. Absolutely incredible how bad this war is going for the Russian Air Force. And it's going to get a lot worse for Russia in the near term, as the United States has confirmed they will be sending Ukraine these tank killer switchblade 600 kamikaze drones. These were announced four or five months ago with a lot of excitement. I even made a video about them. Why has there been such delays? This has been very frustrating. The information that I can find about this is that the... Uh, let me just read this paragraph. The U.S. Army is poised to award a contract for longer-range, harder-hitting kamikaze drones for Ukraine more than five months after they were pledged uh, in the fight against Russia. The research and development contract is for 10 of these Switchblade 600s. Not a thousand, not even a hundred, but 10. Now, several hundred of the uh, smaller Switchblade 300s have been provided. There's videos you can find on social media of their use against Russian forces. And the Switchblade 600 is the lar larger version. And the reason why they haven't been sent yet, this is what I can find. Part of the lag in getting the 600 to Ukraine is that unlike the earlier 300 variants, it's not considered a fielded capability. And because it's still in the prototype phase, it must complete testing and evaluation. 
So I think a contract is going out for this private company that produces this product, Aero Environment. They're going to send the Ukrainians 10. They're going to use them on Russian tanks, Russian armor. They're then going to send the data back to the Pentagon. They're going to evaluate, evaluate the data. And then maybe a larger contract will be coming. But I mean, this is, this is a kamikaze drone that can destroy a tank. Sure would be nice if we had a couple thousand of these to use right now. But when it comes to drones and controlling the skies, Ukraine is slowly gaining the edge. Here's a fun story uh, from the Odessa Journal uh, involving a group called Army of Drones, and they were able to collect and fundraise and purchase more than 470 drones to be donated to the Ukrainian army to be used on the front line. And they put out this pretty slick produced video uh, showing what all these 472 drones would look like if they took to the skies. Let me share this with you. If all the drones got with your help took off into the sky at the same time, it would look like this. All these drones have been very bad news for the Russian forces. Here's a funny story about the sign over the Kirsch Bridge going into occupied Crimea. Maybe it used to say, Welcome to Crimea, but it, somebody hacked the sign and it now reads, Welcome to Ukraine. Speaking of the Kirsch Bridge, somebody put out this viral video that has gotten quite a few laughs. I do have to just state for everybody watching that this video is fake. Uh, but let me let me show you this video that's gotten millions of views. Do you have any regrets? No, don't have time for regrets. Absolutely hilarious. The jokes and the memes online is why hasn't the Ukrainians used the High Mars launcher to destroy the Kirsch Bridge? The U.S. provided uh, GMLRS rockets only have a range of about 70 kilometers. So the joke is, well, why don't you just put a HIMARS on a boat within 70 kilometers of the bridge and blow it up? And sure enough, somebody uh, made a video of a HIMARS launcher on a, on a pool floaty. Here's a cool picture uh, at the JFK airport in New York City. And it, uh, it's meant for Russian tourists. And it says, welcome to New York. Sincerely yours, the FBI. I highly doubt the FBI actually purchased this billboard and put this up in the airport, so somebody in New York City is having some fun. Uh, but if the FBI did put it up, that would, that would be pretty cool of them. I, I would support that. Here's a perfect illustration of today's Russia. This is a giant Russian flag over the Azovstal steel factory, the totally ruined uh, steel factory in a once thriving city that was destroyed by Russia. No chances to restore anything, no jobs, no production, no life, no sense, no future. But hey, there's a Russian flag. And here's a video of what the city of Mariupol looked like just one year ago. This video was taken in the summer of 2021. Mariupol used to be a peaceful city with happy residents before the Russian military came destroyed absolutely everything, and killed tens of thousands of people. It's a sad story to look at the pictures and the videos of this beautiful town today, but with any war, with any historical time period, there's always hope for the future. Here's a comparison of Hiroshima, Japan in 1945, and this is what the city looks like today. It just requires time, 
In addition, Russia has to be expelled from this city and from this territory as the Russian, the Russian government is a kleptocracy where they only exist to extract resources and value from their people and their provinces. So if Mariupol stays within Russian hands, more than likely it'll never be rebuilt to its former beauty and former glory. Final story I want to share with you is a feel-good one of an American volunteer by the name of Ryan Hendrickson. And he's gone to Ukraine to help Ukrainian farmers get rid of Russian landmines. And here's a video he posted on social media of him removing 73 Russian landmines from this farmer's field in a single day. Uh, let's just watch about 40 seconds of this clip together. People ask me why I do what I do. This is his farm over here. This is half a day work, but this is why I do what I do right here. It's heartbreaking, but if we can help him get his life back, then that's why I'm here. Well, hopefully we did the driver of that tractor in his fields. Hopefully we did it some justice today. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to call it a day. Uh, pretty smoked. Been going at it for for a while now since ten. But um, but yeah, I don't know if I have like some twisted goals or maybe a little I don't know, maybe a little off. But uh, wanted to uh, recover hundred landmines one day. Yeah. His goal was one hundred landmines in one day. His name is Ryan Hendrickson. He's from Oregon. He's a retired Green Beret, and uh, this is his Twitter page if you want to check him out. He's got 36,000 followers. He apparently has written a book called Tip of the Spear, and he seems like a great guy. That's all for this video. Glory to the heroes. Glory to Ukraine. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up to support my channel. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video. Take care, be safe.